Yes, thank you very good evening, everyone. Well, someday's FAI Cup final might be the most talked about League of Ireland game this weekend, but for the players and supporters of Cork City and Waterford FC, this game of talent tonight is the biggest game of their season. Just one spot in next year's SSE or Tristan League Premier Division remains. The stakes could not be higher for this playoff final at the Tala Stadium. It's the culmination of a nine-month season that will see either league champions three times in Cork City drop to the second tier for the second time in three years or Waterford FC beaten in this fixture for the second season in running. They lost 1-0 in agonising circumstances to UCD this time last season. So send a duo in a one-on-one -on -one down that right-hand side. Oh, lovely feet from Adowu. And he whips that in, and it was Tierna Brooks that had to get something on it. Preparing to whip it in is Barry Bagley. Oh, and needed dealing with it at the back post, and it's still not clear. And it'll be driven in. What a block that is off the shot of Brian Burke. Throwing himself, and it was Connor Dryden. It's great defending in the end, Dave. He throws himself at it to get the block, but this header here at the back, you can't head that back into your own six-yard box. You've got to shield that, let that go out with a corner kick, heading that back into the mixer. It's criminal to get away with it. Another set piece for Cork to deal with. Goes back out to Burke again. Oh, he's caught that pretty well. It's a couple of shooting opportunities he's had. He's got three goals this season, the 22-year-old. But he hasn't quite managed to hit the target on that occasion. Yeah, this will be a good angle from the behind the goal. It's a decent strike by Bork. It's good port, just on it, never quite on target. Nothing to worry about, but it's been all Cork, uh, all water for 30 this opening eight minutes. Trying it again, one of the Cork men in this starting 11. That's a poor ball, easily read by Power, who tries to release immediately. The runner, Brown and Coughlin. He's all in his own. Coughlin for Waterford FC! What a chance! When he's in that position, you expect the net to bulge. He's been doing it all season. Yeah, as soon as Coughlin comes in on his left foot, they nick the ball on the halfway line. It's criminal stuff again from Cork to give the ball away. Waterford win it, we're straight down the throat. You can't dive in there. Coughlin gets on his left foot, Coleman comes over, he has to stay in his feet. It's a brilliant home by Coughlin, stays on side. You've got to stay on your feet, you let him shoot from the angle. Coleman lets him come inside, you're thinking this is nothing but a goal. A little bit of space that time was for him. Well, that's a good ball across, and it almost broke Kylie for Warman. He had to take it off his toe by Dara Power with an absolutely crucial intervention. Well, it was a hopeful ball forward, but it's fallen for Coughlin. And if there's no flag, he could be away here. Chance maybe for what an FC. Oh, good stop from the goalkeeper. He got his right foot to that shot from Connor Parsons. It may have been destined for the far corner. Yeah, I think Brooks does get a toe on that one. Once the ball bounces with Coughlin, Coughlin really, really, really well to get Parsons through. It's a toy toy angle. I think it might have just been creeping in the far post. Brooks manages to get his big toe on it and just get it away for a corner. Parsons not far away from his eighth goal of the season. Oh, it's been given away. And a chance maybe for Ekachukwu for Waterford FC. Oh, we opted to go inside when surely the better choice is to go alone didn't fancy it himself and I'm sure he regrets that now oh, it's kamikaze stuff at the back again Dave they're under no pressure whatsoever Waterford are setting traps and Cork are walking straight into them hacking and must be must be stronger than that tackle must must be stronger he breaks through the tackle and he makes the wrong decision again the more chance the better chances are coming for Waterford but they're just not being clinical enough Warman again is becoming increasingly influential in this first half. Lovely feet. He easily goes to the inside power. That's surely an offside against Keane. So Warman chases down his own pass! And he couldn't turn it home. Keane Vigari at the back post. Chance maybe for coffee. And now Waterford look to break. Well, that's a foul on um, Ronald McDonald. Well, Coffey just could not adjust his body position quickly enough. This is a brilliant little play by Warman. The little touch there, that's a pass through to Keaton, but he realises Keaton's offside. 
had that have ended up in the back of the net they would have had a huge huge talking point lovely bit of skill though Cork just clicking in the final third all of a sudden well Bagari had a goal and a couple of assists in the FAI Cup win over Waterford Warwick again brilliantly done into the path of O'Brien Whitmarsh ball to the far post oh they've missed everyone Coffey again coming in at the back stick and Bagari just could not turn it home well, that's two chances for Bagari in as many minutes. And it's evaded him on both occasions. Warman at the heart of it again. Yeah, the little back heel is lovely. It opens up the whole pitch. Drives at the centre half. Brilliant little ball, you think. And 1-0. Does he think Bork, the left back for Warford's about to get something on it? Maybe just takes his eye off it. Oh, my God. Both teams would be thinking they should have at least scored one by now. Here's Hackett. Terrible ball again from him. Coughlin now. Two options to his right if he could find them. And he's managed to pick out a Doe. Just forced a little wide. Inside. Dagger Chockwell. Good save by Brooks. A breathtaking counter attack off another straight pass from Jonas Hakkinen. Yeah, it's Hakkinen again. Sloppy ball out in the back. Coughlin picks it up. Lovely little ball to a Doe. He's forced touches just getting away from him. Manages to pull it back. It's a good strike. Brooks is always comfortable, always has two eyes on it. Decent save. It was a decent cutback, hit first time by Romeo Akachukwu. It will be a long throw this time for Bagari. Akachukwu, early ball to the feet of Coughlin, and it's three on two here. Parsons down the middle, he's got a doe to his right. Parsons lays it off to a doe! He just sat up on him as the ball arrived. What an opportunity. He might say there was a bobble, but he should have scored. Yeah, picking himself up off the ground. Hand in his head. He knows he should have scored. Look at this little touch here from Ronan Cochran. Force time. Opens up the whole pitch. Brilliant. There's Parsons running at the heart of the defence. The Cork defence has to narrow up. There's the ball through. Go and finish it. There is a little bubble there, Dave. I'll give him that, but he needs to do better. He can take a touch. He's all the time in the world to take a touch if he wants. Here come Cork City now. Warman lays the ball off. And a chance here. What a save. Keen Murphy with virtually his first touch. Drawing some real quality from Sam Sargent. A brilliant reaction from Cork. Just a couple of minutes off from you suggesting the game had lost its way a little. Exactly. It's, it's brilliant, it's just a long ball and then they win the long ball. It's a brilliant, brilliant strike. Great save by Sargent. The London Boar Waterford FC goalkeeper pushes it away two-handed. Cork showing, he still have plenty up front. Could have been goals at either end of the second half, just five minutes old. Hacking it with the flick! Oh, touched away by Sargent again. Jonas Hacking it with it, it's almost Zola-like. Death flick to the back post. Scored against Sligo Rovers in March. Eight months later, he nearly doubled his tally. With the big centre half with the run across the six yard box. Little flick. Warwick's corner. Punched away by Sargent. Back in. Sargent there again. How busy he has been over the last couple of minutes. And he'll have some more defending to do here potentially. Parsons with the set piece. Curls it towards that far post. And the ball almost ended in the back of the net. Coughlin on it now. Takes a little tumble. Referee not interested. Aaron Bulger bringing it away for Cork City. Game has really come to life in the last few minutes. Warman. Well, that should be a booking now for Ron McDonald, I think it was. Referee left with no alternative. Yeah, never looks good on the eye, that does it. Here's the ball in from Parsons, a brilliant ball in. Both teams haven't been convincing defending set pieces whatsoever. That one nearly gets bundled over the line. You see here, Cork just doing enough to just hack it off the line there. Might Is that a penalty? Off the post. Yeah, like a chuck post. Room. On the pitch, it can often boil down to a set piece. Well, here it comes, there's plenty in the back post. There's the goal! Turns home by Keane Coleman! the captain with the opening goal of this playoff final
What a reaction from the Cork City supporters. Waterford FC never dealt with it as it arrived. And on a night where the contention will continue to rise, it's the skipper that's broken the deadlock. It's a brilliant delivery in, just floats it to the back post. Coleman just goes in behind. I think it's Phillips who's the closest to him. He's appealing for offside. It didn't look like offside. Of Cork, all the suffering they've had in the first half, being slightly the second best team in the game. Over to Waterford now, see how they can react to this. Coleman, who's played in these playoffs with Limerick City before, knows what they're all about. Alfredi. McDonald, kept alive by power, looking for Coughlin in the penalty area. Breaks out to Parsons. Parsons looking to bad one! What a goal that is! Stunning goal! Connor Parsons, who's had chances tonight with a moment of supreme quality. We're level again in Tala. Yeah, what a strike from Parsons here. It's Brilliant, brilliant strike, unstoppable. Sergeant in the sorry, Brooks in the court goal has no chance. As soon as he takes his fourth touch, gets it out of his feet. I'm thinking, go on, hit it, just call it into that top corner. It's a lot easier said than done. Parsons makes it look really, really easy. Brilliant, brilliant finish. And if Wartford were going to hit the back of the net, it needed to be something special given the chances they've already missed. Well, he arrived at the club in January. Waterford FC were his ninth club in four years. He was hoping he'd finally find a home he could settle in. Well, that goal will go an awful long way towards doing just that. Good strength for Warman. And there's a great goal now for Cork. It's four on four. Laid off by Coffey. The ball across! Oh, missed! Oh, Brian Whitmarsh couldn't get anything on it. Oh, Cork haven't gone two one up there, Dave. I'm not quite sure. You see here, it's brilliant play again. The little overlap and run on the outside. It's a brilliant ball in. It's Phillips with a little misstep that creates the opportunity. O'Brien Whitmarsh is there. And to be fair to him, I think that takes a bobble along the six yard box. That takes it off his foot. But to be Dave, he shouldn't be going with his left foot. If he opens out his body and goes with the inside of his right, it's a much easier finish. Gordon Walker and Tommy Falavi will be the two players coming in. There's the corner kick. Oh, fractionally wide. That would have been it. It's gone out for another corner. They came in off the head of Dara Power. You can see the reaction Dara Power has his head in his hands. He feels he should have scored. I think he should have scored. It's a good header. Somehow the ref has given a corner kick there. On we go. Three minutes remaining. Coughlin, oh, clever use of his body. Drives into the space, goes down, penalty! Well, he got the wrong side of the defender. And the referee had no hesitation of pointing to the spot. It's a lovely little ball by Bork outside of the left foot. Cochrane lets him run across his body. And as soon as he runs across his body, he's in the drive. He drives into the box. Coleman knows he's in trouble, he just has to let him go, he does it. Ronan Coughlin knows what he's doing, he puts the brakes on, he waits for it, waits for a bit of a bit of contact, and it, there is contact there, it is a penalty. Here he goes, brilliantly done. His extraordinary season continues, goal number 36. And Waterford lead in this tie for the first time. Well, we said there was all sorts of pressure on this penalty, Dave. You wouldn't have known it looking at Rowan and Coughlin. 
I wouldn't be a big fan of this type of penalty when you run up and you do the little jump waiting on the goalkeeper. But he makes it look so, so easy, little jump. Just rolls it the other side, makes it look so, so easy, and I can tell you it isn't. It isn't easy whatsoever. Brilliant penalty from Ronan Cochran. And in the end, he had an open goal to put it into. His third goal in these playoffs. Sixth time. His fifth time, rather, he scored against Cork City. Put further change, Cork City, during the break there. And brought in Jay's Kavaya. And a chance for Apalavi. And the flag is up. It came off the bar. What an opportunity. And how brilliantly he struck it. What a strike from Afalabi. As soon as he hits it, Dave, I thought we were going to see the, the back of the net ripple. You see, he heads it here, gets it back, one touch, LVC, bang. Crashes off the crossbar, the follow ups offside. It's a great save. Well, the frame of the goal is still rattling. There's a great view from behind. One touch, LVC, bang. Well, that's all it takes. Just one moment of brilliance. And Cork City are right back in it. That's what I'm saying, Afalabi does have that in the locker. Just don't see it enough from him. Well, and power. Kabaya has picked up a position on the left-hand side. 4-4, 23-year-old they brought from Livingston just five months ago. Here's another angle of that effort. Couldn't have struck it any better. Warren. Cork refusing to throw in the towel here. Ball to the far post, away by Onise. Tries for a penalty kick involving Coleman. Here's Coughlin now. Sends it towards the corner. Just seconds remaining. Keen Coleman asking for a penalty there. That was a coming together. I definitely don't think it was a penalty. Launched by Walker. Flicked on by Awalabi. Cleared by Power. Full time whistle goes. Waterford FC are back in the promised land. Back in the big time. And for Cork City, it's devastation. A long, difficult season has culminated in relegation. After an incredible evening at Tala. The Cork City players are crestfallen. For Waterford FC, the celebrations are beginning. They've come from behind to take this playoff final and grasp that last remaining place in the Premier Division for next season. What a story for them, Keith. Yeah, brilliant story. We knew going into it. Keith Long dream it was to go and get Waterford promoted. Come in the door. 90 minutes, 120 minutes to go and do it tonight in Waterford. They got over the line. Nice little touch from the Waterford players. Actually, they're up, they're celebrating, but they're going and picking the court players up off the ground. They're hugging them, they're tapping them on the shoulder. Lovely bit of sportsmanship. Brilliant for Waterford to get the job done. So close last year. The class of Rowan and Cochrane just shines through tonight. Well, they've had so many star performers throughout their first division campaign. But the man who has made so much happen for them is Ronan Coughlin. He kept his cool. There is the full-time score. After extra time for the second time in a week, Waterford FC have got over Cork opposition. This time it's Cork City FC. Same scoreline as the game against Cove Ramblers. Two goals to one. It is they who will be playing in the top flight of League of Ireland football next season.